Hello, and thank you for joining this OncLive peer exchange titled Management of Myeloproliferative Neoplasms, focused on polycythemia vera and myelofibrosis. Myeloproliferative neoplasms are often challenging to treat and may require years of therapy and follow-up care. Prognosis is dependent on the specific disorder and response to treatment. Today, I am joined by a group of my colleagues who are renowned experts in the field of myeloproliferative neoplasm research. During the next 90 minutes, we will discuss evolving research surrounding the treatment of polycythemia vera and myelofibrosis. We'll talk about treatment approaches and highlight emerging agents. I am Dr. Harry Erba, Professor of Medicine and Director of the Leukemia Program at Duke University in Durham, North Carolina. Participating today on our distinguished panel are Dr. Rami Kamroji, Senior Member and Professor of Oncologic Sciences, Section Head for Leukemia and Myelodysplastic Syndromes, and Vice Chair of the Malignant Hematology Department at Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa, Florida. Dr. Mary Frances McMullen, Professor of Clinical Hematology at Queen's University Belfast in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Dr. Ruben Mesa, Director of the Mays Cancer Center, Mays Family Foundation Distinguished University Presidential Chair, and Professor of Medicine at UT Health San Antonio MD Anderson Cancer Center in San Antonio, Texas. And Dr. Jamil Shamo, Professor of Medicine and Pathology and Director of the MDS MPN and Aplastic Anemia Program in the section of Hematology at Rush University Medical Center in Chicago, Illinois. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's begin. So, Jamil, could you uh, just uh, enlighten us as to what is the real incidence of myeloproliferative neoplasms? So, data on epidemiology, let's repeat. So, data on epidemiology of uh, myeloproliferative neoplasms have largely been uh, taken either from single uh, institution or even European data. Uh, up until a paper in 2016 that uh, sort of reported uh, from the SEER data on the incidence of uh, PVET and myelofibrosis, and, and it goes something like uh, 10.9 per million for PV and uh, about not 9 per million for uh, ET and about 3 per million for MF. And obviously these are rare neoplasms, and I think it may, that rarity may pose uh, an issue when it comes to uh, thinking about the diagnosis and making it. Okay. And Ruben, what do the myeloproliferative neoplasms have in common? Well, the myeloproliferative neoplasms, first, they're, they're clonal neoplasms, and they share several features. First, the potential to elevate the blood count, either the red cells, the white cells, the platelets, or, or all three. Uh, second, they have a variable risk of patients developing vascular events, either thrombosis or bleeding. Uh, third, they clearly can impact patients in terms of developing disease-associated symptoms that we believe are related to a, a range of difficulties, including elevations in cytokines and mechanical effects from, from the disease. Uh, next, they have a variable predisposition to enlargement of the spleen that can have consequences in terms of uh, symptoms uh, as well as uh, discomfort. And finally, they all have a variable risk of progression to a more life-threatening form, whether that be ET and PV progressing to the myelofibrosis phase or all of them have some variable predisposition towards acute leukemia. Mm -hmm. 